Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to have a real quick discussion on parameterizing curves. So this is a pretty simple idea. So let's just jump right into it. So to do this, let's take a step back and just consider, you know, uh, your standard idea of a one dimensional function, right? The idea here is you might have some function f, right? Where you have t, some independent variable, and y, a dependent variable, right? And the idea with this function f, right, is that you give it a value of the independent variable, this thing will tell you the value of the dependent variable, right? So this function f effectively assigns a value y for every value of x, right? So as a really simple example, you know, y equals cosine of t, right? Uh, I think everyone knows what that looks like, right? If I were to try to plot um, y versus t, right? You might get something that looks like, uh, you know, I've got this little thing, this little prop here, right? It's gonna look like this, right? So effectively, this is a, uh, this, this curve, right? Or this line, it's, it's a one dimensional object, right? In the sense that as long as you know the single independent variable t, you know every point along this curve, right? Okay, so the idea now with uh, parameterizing a curve is right now the picture that I've got right here on the board, this is sort of constrained in one dimension, right? It's a one dimensional object, right? It's this curve, right, where again, all you need to know is one independent variable value and you know everything you need to know about this curve, right? But what if I wanted to take this curve and instead of having it constrained in the board, what if I want to rip it out of the board and maybe it's now in space in some weird orientation or, you know, maybe it's not even this simple any longer. It might be something funky like this, right? Where now this curve, again, this curve is, remember, it's a one dimensional object, right? As long as I know how far along or some independent variable along its length or some distance, I should be able to describe the location along this curve, even though it's, it's, it exists in three-dimensional space, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about here when we're talking about trying to generate a parametric equation which now describes this curve location in space, right? So if my hand down here is the origin, what I'm really looking for is I need some kind of vector function that prescribes the three-dimensional point of any location along this curve for every single single value of an independent variable t, right? So that's what we're talking about right here. So when someone says a parametric equation or a parametric representation of a curve, all we're really talking about is some vector function where again, you tell me an independent variable and this function is going to assign the dependent variables, which in this case, it might be the three dimensional location of this curve. Right? So to formally write this down, for example, we could say that this is a parametric representation of some curve where this r is a position vector from some origin to any location along the point, right? So here again, you have a single independent variable, right? Because a curve is a one dimensional object, right? So let's call this thing t. t is the independent variable that we are gonna let go from zero or from some minimum value up to some maximum value, right? And now what I have is you have a function x, which will tell me now and assign the x locations of this curve at any value t. You have another function y, which assigns the y values of the curve for any value t. And you have a third function z, which assigns the z values of this curve for any value t, right? So again, the thing to take away from this is even though this curve now lives in three dimensional space, namely it has an X, Y, Z coordinate for every location along this curve, right? There's still one independent variable or one independent parameter T, which is gonna help us describe where we are along the curve, right? Okay, so let's start simply with this. Let's look at maybe a, uh, uh, th this example right here, okay? So here's my function. Let's just deal with two dimensions. Deal with x and y, okay? So here's my function that is gonna give me all the x values for the independent variable. In this case, we're gonna call the independent variable theta, and I think it's gonna, you're gonna see why I called it theta in a second, but again, it's just some independent variable, right? Here's my x equation, and here's my y equation, right? So the thing I always like to think about with these per parametric or parameterized curves is just make yourself a table, right? So I have the independent variable here. I'm just gonna pick a whole bunch of random numbers from some minimum value, maybe a theta of zero, all the way up to some maximum value of two pi. 
And I'm going to chunk this up into, I don't know, I'm going to pick a bunch of random spots. I don't know, pi over 4. So here's 0, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, et cetera, et cetera, right? So really, that's, that's all I'm doing is I am stepping little iterations and little deltas in my independent variable. And all I'm going to do right now is just look at, okay, here's an independent variable value of zero. Well, just run my function here of a times cosine of that independent variable, see what I end up with. So I'm just going to pick some random numbers for a and b just to make the numbers something physical. So a is going to be 3, b is going to be 1.2, okay? So again, if you plug in theta equals zero to this equation with those a and b values, here's what you get for a uh, for x, and here's what you get for y, right? So awesome. What this tells us right now is this gives us a single point in, in this case, in the plane, right, where at theta v equal to zero or the independent variable value of zero, you end up with an x position of three and a y position of zero, where I can easily plot this down here on this plot. That's right here. Okay. Now let's, let's proceed. Let's go to the next row on this table, right? So here is the independent variable value of one pi over four. Again, just run it through the numbers. Here's what you end up with. So you get this number, this coordinate of 2.12, so it's someone back here, and 0.84, I don't know, so something like something like this or something like that, right? And you go through and you keep plotting this. So here's the third point, you get x of 0, 1.2, so there's a point up here, and et cetera, et cetera. You keep doing this, right? And you get all of these points around this, right? And I think where you can see where this is going, right? That if you go ahead and actually sweep through these values of the independent variable from minimum to maximum and maybe do it at a finer granulation, right? You basically get this ellipse, right? So that's kind of neat, right? So a parametric representation is going to allow us to describe these more complicated curves with individual equations, right? So Mathematica actually has a really great function that's going to help you with this. It's called parametric plot. And actually, let me just double check to make sure I've got the syntax of this correct. Um, but you can do this and plot this directly in Mathematica if you'd like to do this. Um, where was it? Yes, parametric plot. And again, here's an output of what that looks like. And you can see it's just like what we sketched on the board, right? Okay, now let's extend this idea, right? We, we don't have to stay in two dimensions or two um, x, y in the board, right? We can extend our parametric representation to have a, three uh, a third dimension. So for example, let's just go here and let's change this example from being a two-dimensional ellipse, let's change this now to maybe like a 3D elliptical uh, like helix, right? So what I, I'm going to do is let's modify this. Let's go ahead and add a Z component to this. Something like, uh, you know, to make this really, really simple, how about uh, C times theta, okay? Okay? So what we can do now is what we've got is we've got, again, the x equation, the y equation, and now we have a z equation. So what I can just do is just come back to our table. Let's tack on a third column. In fact, let me go ahead and erase some of these, give us a little bit more room, right? So we just need another column here, which is basically z is c times theta, right? And again, you can fill this out however you like. Um, you know, pick a value of C. I'm going to use the exact same values of A and B. What did I use in this plot? Uh, I don't know. For giggles, let's go ahead and use, again, I think we had A of, what was it, 3, B of 1.2, and then a C of, uh, it really doesn't matter. You know, let's pick the same thing, 1.2, something like that, right? So you can see that basically what you're going to do is you're going to have to fill these in, and this will give you Z value. So again, zero here, you're going to get zero, right? Um, this one you're going to get, oh gosh, now it's, oh boy, it's 1 pi over 4 times 1.2, whatever that number comes out to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And we could go ahead and plot this, and you can see what's going on here now is you actually are going to get this ellipse, right? But it's going to start having the z value grow out of the plane, right out of the board so the z dimension comes out of the page so you end up with this sort of elliptical helix description right which you can get from this parametric representation and again maybe the easiest thing to do is let's go over to mathematica and actually do this because mathematica has obviously the parametric plot but we also have parametric plot 3d to get us three dimensional um three dimensional uh plots of these parametric curves so let's jump over to the computer 
All right, so here we are in Mathematica, and again, let's just back up. I wanted to show you how to use the parametric plot function if you wanted to use it to plot these two-dimensional uh, parametric representations. So again, here was our ellipse that we had earlier. So again, you just kind of give it the x component, the y component, and then you tell it a range of independent variables that you'd like to see. So in this case, be going from 0 to 2 pi. And as you can see, it goes ahead and plots that parametric representation uh, for you. And as you can see, we get this ellipse with a semi-major axis of 2 and a semi-minor axis of 1.2 as we discussed on the board. Um, again, while we're at it, let's look at the 3D helix, the one that we just looked at as well. So again, I'll do the exact same thing, except now I'm going to use parametric plot 3D, and now I give it the X, the Y, and the Z component. And again, when you evaluate this, giving it a vet range of independent variables you'd like to see, again, I'm going from zero to 10 in this case, you get a three-dimensional representation of this parametric plot. And again, as you can see, it's sort of this ellipse, which also rises in the Z dimension um, as the parameter T increases, right? So pretty neat. You get all this kind of functionality to make these cool parametric representations. And I guess while we're talking about parametric representations and while I've got Mathematica open let's go ahead and look at one last interesting one this is the idea of the uh, hypotrochoid so here are the whoops sorry that should be a y there we go here are the x and y um, parameterizations for a given independent variable theta and what we can see now is if I go ahead and again, I'm just going to use parametric plot right here to plot this. Again, it's a two dimensional curve, right? It just has X and Y components, but I'm just going to go ahead and vary these other parameters. So I'm going to hold capital R constant at five, but I want to vary and see what happens when I change little r and change D. So again, I'll let you look up the idea of what this um, hypotrochoid is, but it's basically uh, as described here, it's a curve that's traced by a point attached to a circle, uh, a small circle of radius little r, which is rolling around the inside of a fixed circle of radius big R, and where the distance d from the center of the smaller circle is where you're kind of tracing from. So again, that's what this should do, what this parametric representation is. And again, let's just go ahead and plot this for different values of r and d. So for example, let me, let me change these uh, you know, I don't know, let's start, uh, let's ma make something random, I don't know, R value of that, D value of that, and let's just go ahead and vary um, the independent variable theta, so let's go ahead and just, let me animate this, and you can kind of see what this does, so look at this, it makes these cool spiral sort of shapes, right? Um, and again, you can kind of mess with these, and you can see that changing these parameters are going to change the shape that is traced out, Right? This is kind of neat, right? So again, this might seem familiar to you um, because you can see, yeah, you get these kind of cool patterns depending on different values of what you end up using, right? Ooh, that's a kind of a neat one. There you go, right? This makes these cool patterns. So again, these parametric equations and parametric representations are pretty darn neat. They can uh, make these interesting representations. And again, this might look familiar to you because you've probably seen this before. In fact, maybe when you were a kid, you might have seen these as this toy, right? There's this thing called the Spirograph, which was created and commercialized by British engineer Dennis Fisher in 1965. And they basically, that's exactly what this is doing, right? You've got a little circle of radius little r. You've got it rolling around the inside of a big circle of radius capital R. And that distance from the uh, where you're tracing is that in the little circle that is that distance little d so that's what you get here and here are the is the parametric representation of that curve that's generated by those spirograph toys and again here is now the mathematical representation of it right here and again we see that parametric parametric equations and parameterized curves can be used to describe these this kind of complicated geometry so this is just gonna be a short video. I just wanted to get this out here. We are gonna use and build on this topic now as we move into ideas of trying to compute interesting parameters like curve length or uh, tangents to these curves. That's gonna come up in our later next 
video and in fact we will later on expand this as well to not just parameterizing these one dimensional curves but maybe thinking about parameterizing two dimensional surfaces so again that's coming up in a future discussion and I hope you'll stick around for that and we can all learn something new together so until then I think I'm going to sign off talk to you later bye